Hey beauties, my name is Casey and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be working with some hair from Beautiful Princess Hair. In this package it comes with a wig cap and a edge brush. And the hair is 24 inches, 13 by 6 closure. The lace is advertised as HD lace, however this is more like transparent lace. That is the parting space inside. It is 6 inches in the middle. Most of the space is in the middle for parting. Not much parting space on the side. The hairline does come pre-plucked as well. So I bleached the knots and I plucked out the hairline some more off of camera. I really had minimal shedding when it came to like washing it out and combing it through, so that was good. So let's get right into the install. This is my beautiful client and we did the bald cap method. So right now what I'm going to do is take some of my Lux Melt Glue and I'm just sealing the ends, sorry, sealing the tips, I should say rather, of the cap down. I did go in with my mouth spray and already do the process. But this is just going to seal that, that, just give that extra seamless look around the hairline before I even apply the wig. So we're just doing a really thin coat just to seal the ends up, the, seal the ends of the, the cap down. I can't talk today, sorry guys. But if you guys want like a detailed um, bald cap method the way I do it, um, you guys just let me know in the comments and I will definitely do a... A, a more in-depth bald cap method but for now i just wanted to show you guys how i do my installs so that's what this video is mostly based on so just keep watching i use ruby kisses cream oil free foundation on her wig cap i also took some of that on a makeup brush and put it all inside of the wig on the lace as well so what I'd like to do before I actually put the wig on my client's actual head, I take the wig and I and I just use my hot comb and I pull all the hair back. So it's all pulled out. There's no hairs like hanging that can get into the glue or anything like that. So I just use the hot comb and brush all the hair going back so that it's just easier for me to see her hairline, see where I need to put the glue. So I'm making sure that the wig, I'm pulling the wig over the cap so you can actually see the cap through the wig um, and that's a good guide for where you need to place the hair so the cap the wig actually needs to cut the hairline actually needs to come over the cap slightly maybe like a very slight like very very slightly just just to cover it like basically you're just covering the cap so what i like to do is i like to cut the tabs around the ear off first what that is, is just the extra lace that goes over the ear that isn't needed. Sometimes there's hair on it, you just have to part it around the, the client's ear and then cut that off. Sometimes it cuts off a little bit of the hair, but that's okay. Like sometimes that extra hair is not needed, but you gotta be very careful not to cut through the wig. Like don't cut through the cap that the wig is actually made on. That's what I mean. Cause that, that can happen if you're not being careful, you're not looking. I'm sorry, I didn't get this angle. I didn't realize that I had the cam, like I wasn't facing her toward the camera, but I did get the other side. So keep on watching. So you're basically looking to see where um, it's covering her, their client's ear and you cut it from there. That's it. That's how easy it is. And then it just gives you more flexibility. The wig becomes a little bit more looser and easier to, to maneuver and manage. So now we are ready to glue her down. So I'm going to go in with my Lux Melt waterproof glue. Um, this glue I'm just going to use about three or four coats around her hairline. The more coats you use, uh, honestly, it just helps the wig adhere easier and it lasts longer she'll have a long wear on her install and she won't have to worry about anything lifting or anything like that it just holds it in place so that's why i like to do at least three or four layers of glue sometime even five depending on how i feel um for that day or how i feel about the lace so that's what you see me doing here for every layer that you put on you make sure it's smooth out and you make sure that it dries clear before you add another layer to it because what happens is if you continuously add layers when the glue is not dry it'll become very gunky and it'll show through the lace if it's all gunky and like like curdled like it's not smooth so just watch closely just watch closely to see how i'm doing it i do one side at a time so one side gets a chance to dry and then i'll go in and do the other side and that's just how i get all the layers on Oh, mm -hmm. 
So the pink applicator blush that I'm using to put the glue on, that actually comes with the glue that you can um, purchase on my website as well. last layer is dry i'm going to take the wig and carefully i'll start in the middle and pull it down pull it down slightly over the glue so i don't want the hairline to be directly placed onto the glue i want it to be slightly over the glue what that does is it gives you more control if you have to go back in and add more glue but if it's on the hairline it could be possibly that when you cut the lace off and you cut the lace off you'll be able to see the glue because it's too close to the hairline so this gives you more flexibility to add glue but you cannot take away glue well technically i guess you can take away glue but the process is so tedious and messy and it's just something that you want to avoid altogether so right now i just have my blow dryer on the heat setting to warm up the glue to tack it down i'm using my finger and then i put on the cool setting to then cure the glue a little bit before i put the melt bat on So the melt band it presses the lace into the skin to help it cure and melt into the skin that's what it's for so i like to leave it on for as long as possible at least 10 to 15 minutes that's how long i leave it on so while i have it on i just go through the hair blow dry it out make sure that it is sewed down so i just pull some of the back of her hair up and i just take some thread and I don't like to make the thread um, too tight together so it's hard for her to take out. So I kind of just make it snug enough so that the wig is secure, but not tight enough so it's hard to take down when she's ready. So like I'll part the I'll part the wig at the back like three rows up and the space between the track where you can still see the cap, I'll pull the wig down and I'll sew that to her braids. I'm going through the hair with the hot comb just getting some of the kinks out some of the um, waves out of the hair before I go into style I just want to make sure that some of the waves are out just a little bit more straight it gives us a neater a neater look once you start curling up the hair I zoomed in to show you guys exactly what I'm doing. So I'm cutting the lace into three sections. 
So I do this because it gives you more control and it just helps you make less mistakes. Um, and you could just take your time instead of trying to go through the entire lace with, with just one motion. So right now I'm parting out the hair that's not glued down. Now, <clears throat> when you may not be able to see it on camera, but standing this close to your client, you can actually see the, sh the sheen, the glue kind of has like a shiny look to it once it's not fully dried. And you can kind of see what hair needs is not glued down and what hair is glued down. And so the hair that I'm cutting off right now is not glued down and it's not needed because it goes far past her hairline. And it's just an extra hair that's not needed. So I'm cutting it off. Now, this is just my opinion, but I personally believe there should always be a tiny bit of hair, a sm that small bit of hair that's cut off. That means that your lace is far enough over the glue so that the hairline will not be messy and full of glue residue like once you cut the lace off so even if it's just a few little hairs at least you know for sure that it's not um, going to leave the glue on your client's face because that is just messy and it doesn't leave a nice finish for your client and she's they're gonna have glue on their face like nobody wants glue on their face the key to a most natural hairline is honestly the plucking. Now, my client didn't want too much to be plucked out for the sake that um, she wants to rewear this wig a few times. And when it's extreme pluck out, like it makes it harder for you to have longevity on your wig because every wash, hair will come out. In any case, if you guys do want to see a more in depth, an actual plucking video, like of me actual plucking, just let me know in the comments and I'll. I'll, I'll do my best to make a plucking video where I show you how to pluck and show you how to tell if it's plucked out enough or you should go back in and pluck a little bit more, things like that. You guys, when you're cutting the lace off, make sure you're cutting in a dragon motion. I prefer using scissors than an actual razor. I find the scissors give me more control. I want to mention, please take your time when you're doing this. There is literally no rush. You shouldn't feel nervous. I remember when I first started doing installs like this, um, I was a little bit nervous. I used to get anxiety if I felt like I was taking too long or I had the client sitting too long. But if they want their hair done like really well, they will prefer you take your time as opposed to rushing it. Believe me. So don't and trust the process. Even if it looks crazy to begin with, it'll work out for you. So I got all the lace cut off right now. Um, I'm just uh, cutting the final bits off that are still not, that I feel like don't are not needed. And then I'm gonna go back in and actually add some glue to keep down the hairs that I do feel like are needed still, but I did, they're not fully glued down yet. So that's what you're gonna see me doing next. I'm gonna stop talking and you could just watch. <laughs> I am so sorry you guys that my freaking hand is blocking me doing this part right now i'm actually putting some glue on top of the lace the lace that's not um glued down just on that side because the the, the hair itself like the the part that's actually lifting up is a very tiny tiny space so i couldn't lift it up high enough 
to get the, the tail comb under it. So I just put the glue on top of that part of the lace and it will dry. Don't worry about it. Trust me, it will dry. Do you see it's already drying invisible there? It's actually going on top right now. That, that little tab that I'm putting the glue under but by her hairline, that's, that's big enough, a big enough gap for me to fit the tail comb under to put the, the glue on. But the side right there, right above, right above her hair, her um, her ear, that portion right there, I couldn't get under far enough for the glue not to be messy around her hairline. So I had to put the glue on top of her hairline, which is perfectly fine. Believe you me, like it will dry clear. Do not worry about it. You could see around the hairline is still a little bit lighter than her skin. So there's a few more steps that need to be taken before you put them up back melt band back on to do the final job I'm going in and parting out the baby hair. My client wants dramatic baby hair, so that's what I'm parting out right now so that she can have that effect. So that's what you see me doing currently. make sure that your part is clean so there's no hair in between the part the space for the rest of the hair and the baby hair just make sure it's a clean part just a very clean part now I'm gonna go in with my Lux melt wax stick and so this is just to help me mold that push the hair back just to make sure that my I can have the part between the baby hair and the hair stay remain clean um, through this process this is Ruby Kisses Oil Free Cream Foundation, the same foundation that I use on her wig cap and on the actual inside of the wig. And I'm just tapping a little bit more on the hairline to blend it out further because um, I said it earlier, it was a bit light. And then I'm going to go in with a spray. This, this I'm going in with my Lux Melt um, Melt Spray just to further melt the lace into her hair before I tie it down. Um, you can also use another hairspray, whatever hairspray you have. Um, you can use Gatsby Free Spray. Just a free sp a hairspray that is tacky, but not too, too thick. Well, not too thick. I shouldn't say thick. I mean like extra hold, like too firm of a hold. Um, because then it's kind of makes it too stiff and hard to maneuver in case you need to fix anything when you're laying your baby hair. So I just use my melt spray. I think that does the trick. And now I'm just parting like 
cleaning up the middle part, just make sure it's in the middle and it's parted to frame her face properly. My client wanted a middle part with curls. So with curls, it is very important to cut layers through their wig. This, um, the layer is what it does, it adds body, it adds more fullness to the wig, it makes your curls look more full and last longer as well. So what you see me here doing is cutting layers into the hair. I'm taking my, my comb um, just to part out some sections. And the first section I'm going through with the front and I'm gonna cut layers closer, like. The first layer I'm going to cut is near closer to the, her chin length and then just zipping through with my scissors. So that's what you're going to see me doing right now. I also trim the ends of the hair. So I take about take off about maybe a half an inch. So that length of your hair, like the bottom part is very thin and stringy. Like so I just like to cut it, cut it to a point where it's all even. Um, and so it's very thick at the ends instead of stringy because when you have stringy hair at the ends when you curl it the curls look kind of messy and stringy so it, it's not a really good look and it's not worth trying to keep the length for that it doesn't it just it's just quality right now over quantity for sure preparing to start curling so I'm just gonna do some final touches um, mold down the top a little bit more I'm gonna go back in with my wax stick once again um, just to get rid of any flyaways make sure the top is nice and clean before I start styling to part the back into two so i part right down the middle in the back um, that's how i like to style a style for curls i like to do one side first and then i'll curl the other side instead of going all the way across i find it a lot easier and i like to 
curl going to um, away from the face on the opposite side. So curl going in. Unfortunately, my battery dies before I can show you the full curling tutorial. I'm so sorry, guys. I will make sure it will be my point of duty to make sure I film a curling tutorial if you guys need one. A helpful tip when curling is make sure that when you do your curl, you use a pin and you pin it up so that the curl has time to um, to to cool down. When the curl cools down, it'll make the curls last longer when you comb them out. And my battery dies around here. But this is the finished results, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel where I'll be posting more videos like this to help you guys out. Thank you so much for watching. Later.